I'm going to begin by asking you a question. How many of you have typed something since this morning? Okay, almost everyone has put up their hand. And how many of you have typed something since this morning in your mother tongue? Okay, two, three, four people have put up their hand. So this is a question that I've asked in many, to many audiences in many countries. And only in India do I get a, such a poor response to the second question that I ask. So that is what I'm going to talk about today. So we come across this problem from time to time everywhere. So for example, once somebody had put up this beautiful mural uh, in IIT Bombay campus. It is very delicate and very nicely done. And because it is so delicate, he put up a sign next to it. And the sign said, please do not touch. The English sign was beautifully typeset. The Hindi sign was handwritten. We come across this kind of a situation very often in our lives. It is not only about these homemade signs. It is also about professionally designed film posters. So these are professional designers, but they don't know how to type in Hindi. So they tend to put up a Hindi poster also in the Roman script. And sometimes there is a little bit of Hindi, but it is very small and on one side. So typographers really don't play that much with Hindi typefaces as much as they do with English typefaces. And this is a problem that actually bothers me quite a bit. This is on the Wikipedia. So the, this graph shows that along the x-axis, uh, it plots the languages according to the number of speakers in millions. And along the y-axis, it shows the number of Wikipedia articles in thousands. Okay? In this corner here are languages like English, German, Russian, Spanish, Portuguese, Mandarin. These are all languages with very high number of, very large number of uh, native speakers as well as a very large number of Wikipedia articles, both above, uh, above 100 million native speakers and about a, above a million Wikipedia articles. This corner on the left, we have languages uh, which have a very small number of native speakers and still a very large number of Wikipedia articles. You probably have never heard of this language called Warewari in India. Uh, it is a language spoken in Philippines. It has only about 2.6 million speakers, only 26 lakh speakers. So that's between Andheri, Asalfa, and Ghatkopar. So that much population. But they have more than a million speakers, so that these are beautiful languages. But many of our Indian languages, unfortunately, are sort of here in the middle. Okay, so uh, there are only three Indian languages with more than one lakh uh, Wikipedia articles, 100,000 Wikipedia articles. So Urdu is the highest with 130,000. Hindi is the second highest with 123,000. And Tamil is the third with 115,000. And all other languages, Malayalam, Marathi, Kannada, Gujarati, Punjabi, Bangla, are less than 100,000. In fact, Odia is down here with only 2,500 articles in the Wikipedia. So that is something that bothers me. So people have asked, why is it that we are working in this space? We could just teach everyone how to type in English. We have our schools. We commonly teach English in our schools, so this should not be a problem in a few years. Well, the problem is, that technology penetrates society much faster than we can teach people. Okay? So for example, this red line here shows the number of mobile phones back from 1991 till present in India in crores. So we have about 118 crore mobile connections in India right now. Okay? And that is our population. So most of our population is almost covered. Okay? This yellow line uh, here, which you can probably dimly see, shows the number of internet users in India. And that is rising very rapidly also. And this blue line after that shows the number of smartphone connections in India, smartphone devices being sold in India. And this green line shows the number of graduates in India. Okay, HSE diploma, metric, the pink line there is the metric, middle school, primary school, and that is the literacy line. And we can see that technology, new technology particularly, penetrates through the layers of society very, very quickly. 
And there is a large chunk of what we call as non-English but literate population. These are extremely productive members of society, but they cannot read the English. And they are that those yellow and the blue lines are almost touching them. They are already penetrating in that circle. And th this is a current and now problem. They can read in their own mother tongue. So teaching them English is not going to be a viable option in the next few years. The second question that sometimes people ask me is, OK, we cannot teach people English, but we can use the ideas from these languages into our own languages. So this world map sort of shows which, what are the different types of scripts that are used in the world. So this gray part is where what are called as alphabets. These are all, so the Roman script that we use in English is the alphabet. So this gray part, Europe, Americas, southern half of Africa, and Australia and many other countries use the alphabets. This red part on the right is China, Japan, uh, Korea. So those are the ones which use logographic and featural languages. This middle part over here are the languages such as Persian, Arabic, our own Urdu. So those are the Abjad languages. And the languages from which we can borrow from are spoken in these countries. So India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Burma, and a few countries around us, Ethiopia, and uh, some parts of northern Canada, near the North Pole. So most of the people who speak these languages are in these countries. And so if any new ideas have to come, they have to come from here. We cannot really borrow from very far away. So given that this is a problem that people cannot type, what is it that these people cannot do? They cannot make presentations like the one that I'm making. They cannot write documents. They cannot create posters or shop signs. They cannot send a message. They cannot shop online. Or they cannot book a train ticket uh, or search or even save a contact. So we are preventing people from doing all these things just because we are not able to give them a usable keyboard. So this is the design problem that we have been working on for all these years. Given that typing in Indian languages is hard, how to make a keyboard that is usable by every literate Indian? So that was our dream. That was our goal. So we've been working on this problem for quite a few years. We started back in 2002 by designing a new keyboard, a completely new design for the desktop keyboard. Uh, we continued when, smartphone, uh, the, when feature phones started arriving. So 2008, 2009, we were working on feature phones. But today, I'm going to talk about our work on smartphones. So around 2010, smartphones started arriving. And that is when uh, this bright young man came to me and said that he wanted to design a keyboard for smartphones. So that's where it started. He came up with several designs, but one specific design he came up with is Swara Chakra. And I'll, ex I'll, I'll talk about this design here. So many people in IIT and outside liked his design that soon we had a large number of contributors. So, so we currently have about 90 contributors who are contributing to development, maintenance, and design of Swara Chakra in various languages. So I'll just try to explain how we went about it. So there are, we essentially looked at it as four important problems. The number of characters, the sequence of typing, the conjuncts, and the speed with which we type. So just four important problems to solve at design. So the first problem is the number. We just have a large number of characters, larger than the Roman scripts anyways. So the Roman script, for example, has 26 characters. Most Indian languages would have between 55 to 65 characters to type. So that makes it harder. How did we tackle it? Well, that continues to be hard, but we tried our best. We used a familiar layout. So this is the layout that you use in kindergarten to teach children how to, how to read. So we use that layout. We group characters so that they are easy to find. We put some, we, we use our best graphic design techniques to make the layout beautiful. The second problem that people face is that of sequence. How do I, in what sequence? So if I have to type ka, do I type the ka first or a first? Now that is simple. It looks like the matra will come second. The consonant will come first. But what if I have to type the key? Does the matra come first? Because the matra appears first, visually. In fact, our matras, they all appear on all sides of the consonant, to the left, to the right, above, below. So this is what confuses a lot of people. So what we try to do is we try to take the decision of sequence out of the hands of the user. What we do is if you touch the keyboard, if you touch a particular consonant, on your touch, 
the keyboard displays a circle of all the vowels. That is why it is called the Swara Chakra. It's a chakra of vowels. So you take the decision of sequence out and you just select the one that you want at that time. The third problem is of conjuncts. So for example, if you're typing clumsy in English, you will just type clumsy, right? And the C and the L will stand next to each other without touching. We are a little more friendly in India. So the K and the L will join together and will form a new character. And this is what confuses a lot of people. And K and, K and L will join together, but they will still look like L. I mean, K and L, you can read in them. But in, in, in some cases, like when you're doing K and R, for example, the R disappears. Or when you're typing RK, RK, the Raka, the Rafar, people think they should type after they type the K, like all matras. But actually, you have to type it before. So these are the difficulties that a lot of people face. So what we did was, we made this process a lot easier. So for example, if you want to type a conjunct starting with B, you touch B, and then you move your finger up to add the halant. As soon as you do that, the keyboard shows you all possible conjuncts that you can make starting with B. And then you have to just choose. So if you're trying to type blah, you just search for blah, blur, and then you go in that direction and you get blah. So it makes typing a conjunct a lot easier. We did a few other tricks which I will not go into because I don't have that much time. But we put all these design ideas together and we released Swara Chakra for various languages, Hindi, Marathi, and Bangla. Gujarati, Malayalam, and Assamese. Konkani, Punjabi, and Tamil. Kannada, Telugu, and Odia. Uh, so 12 languages is what we are supporting now. All of these languages are being supported by various groups through voluntary efforts. And what is, we launched the product in 2013. And in the last four and a half years, it has reached 3.1 million people, 31 lakh downloads in the last four and a half years. Now, one thing I must mention about this keyboard, it is, it is a zero budget keyboard. It runs on voluntary contribution of people's effort, not money. So for a, we don't advertise. We don't have budgets for advertising. So the keyboard spreads only through the word of mouth. And so we, are, we, are extremely, we were extremely surprised, in fact, when we got our first 50,000 downloads in the first year. We were thinking, who the hell are, I mean, this is a lab-based product. We just put it out so that it is easy to download. Why are people downloading it? And are they even using it? So we checked that for the first time after one year. And we found that within one year, just a group of 50,000 people had typed about 13 lakh words. Okay. Over the next couple of years, that rate increased. Uh, it went from 13 lakh words in one year to 20 crore words in three years. So the usage was like going up. So earlier, every user was typing about 10 words per month using our keyboard. In a couple of years, they started typing 100 words a month using our keyboard. So the first three, we were quite satisfied that we have solved the problem that people can now type. To solve the last problem, which is of speed, what we did is we set up a race between four keyboards that were available and that were popular at that time. So these were, uh, Swara Chakra was one of them. Uh, we took in CDAC InScript, which is the government standard keyboard implemented on Android. And then we took SwiftKey, which is a top of the line keyboard with a lot of latest technology in it. And we did Sparsh. I must point out that both SwiftKey and Sparsh also had things like prediction, and SwiftKey also had swiping and so on, which are some of the latest technologies. So we set up a race of these four keyboards. And we, we, what we decided is that we will do this race with children. So children helped us identify which would be the best keyboard. So we went to government schools, four government schools, two in Mumbai and two in, uh, one in Nanded and one about 15 kilometers out of Nanded in a village. So we went to different kinds of schools because we wanted different kinds of representations. And we trained the children. Each child we trained individually for about 40 minutes. And then we did a 
uh, first time usability test with them to make sure that they, could, they had actually learned what they had taught them. And then after that, we called them for about 15 days every day for two sessions, uh, for 30 sessions in all. In each session, they came and typed out 10 phrases. And then we counted how fast are they typing and how well are they doing. And so this was the result. People started typing around 15 characters per minute. Now, that's very low. Typically, you type, for example, at about 100 characters per minute in English. But within about four or five hours, they'd reached about 40, 45 characters across the different keyboards. One thing I would say is that Swarachakra came out as the winner because that yellow line at the top that you see, that is the Swarachakra line. And sort of it was consistently ahead of the other keyboards. So it won the race, and we were happy about it. But there was one thing that we were not very happy about. One of the things that we wanted to work on next was to add prediction to Swarachakra because we saw all these other keyboards using fantastic prediction systems. And what we were surprised to find is that both the keyboards that were using prediction in the latest stuff were actually slower than the other ones. Keyboards did not predict about half the words, so the gray stuff above were the words that were not predicted. And people did not select even the words that were predicted. So these dashed lines that you see in between were the words that they did not select. So people selected a very small set of words. Did they, will, did they do well within the words? No. So people actually, the same person typing without using the prediction was typing faster than the person who was using the prediction. So this brings me to our current work that we are doing right now. So in the last few years, speech in Indian languages has become available. Jabalpur Jane ki ticket kitne ki hai? Jangan man adhinayak jaya hai. So speech is good, it is improving dramatically, but it sometimes does not capture everything that you are saying correctly. So you have to go and make changes. And, some t and it has shown that in English that slows people down as much that it is not so effective. So we did a similar study, and what we found was that as soon as we gave people speech, their speed went up. So the red line shows one group, and, uh, which was typing at around 40 to 45 characters per minute. The blue line shows the other group. And when we gave the other group, again, they also went up and this group came down. So speech helps in improving the speed. So that is what I wanted to leave you with. One is that a large number of Indians have just started to type. They have found a new voice. Second, prediction is not necessarily working for Indian languages at least. Third, speech seems to help a lot. And I believe that we have a huge opportunity coming up to design for new group of users that has found a new voice. And the lastly, I would invite all of you to contribute to Swarachakra and help it grow. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.